Hello everyone, this is Pav. I hope you're enjoying the videos and finding some values. This is a, another one of many uh, finance solutions. And this time you're gonna cover the topic uh, development finance. Now, a lot of our customers, uh, customers who are starting in the property, customers who already have some properties, everyone, the, the prime aim is to be able to get into the development finance way by doing their own developments, uh, buying a piece of land, uh, building something, creating something, uh, buying a buying a commercial building, converting into residential. And the process is a bit more complicated. So I've done my best and, and be with me. I will I will take you one by one step. So so it's all gonna make sense by the time you finish this video. It all's gonna make so much sense. And as again, if you're gonna have more questions at the end of the video, you can comment or you can email us or join one of our Zoom calls. So with development finance, as the you know uh, topic says, it, the title says itself, developing something. Most of the time, when we have our clients, uh, uh, in in most examples, uh, they bought a piece of land, or they would like to buy a piece of land, either with planning or without planning, and they come to us uh, for the purpose of uh, obtaining finance. Now, most of you know already, we are uh, a finance brokerage uh, firm, which is uh, one arm of the business, which is called Property and Finance Solutions. We are fully regulated with FCA financial conduct authority we're also a full member of NACFB which is National Association of Commercial and Finance Brokers which is a volunteer mem membership and we always do our best to make sure we keep our clients in, in in line keep them you know being proactive tell them everything so they can make an informed decision so with development finance again we will be looking into some of the the key uh, parameters which is timing the loan to value now loan to value in development finance works a little bit differently so i'll explain you that in more detail uh, we also look into the rate uh, everyone wants the uh, best deal and we also look into exit we look into the fees and you know there are there are a few other things you can see here pg which just stands for personal guarantee and uh, now there is everyone knows if you have seen our previous videos you know what does loan to value LTV stands for? Loan to value means the amount of mortgage you are taking uh, from the bank. But there is also, when you do development finance, there are some new terms which are called GDV, which is called your gross development value and gross development value. And you also have this line loan to GDV. So loan to gross development value and there's also called a GDC, which is gross development cost. So yeah, so yeah, so to make it more effective, what I've done is uh, I have uh, created an imaginary example here uh, to make the make the you know figures stack up. So if you if you have a look here, see, uh, let's say you find a, a land which is worth five hundred thousand pound, and uh, I'm just gonna have to turn this camera a bit. So here we go. So let's say we find a land with a land value of 500,000 pound. And let's assume it's a piece of land and it's got planning already. And now uh, in order for you to build what you're looking to build, so let's say you're building five houses there with 300,000 pound each house. So the construction cost to build those houses is gonna be 500,000. So that make it total land value 500 and construction cost of 500, 1 million. And once those houses were built, like, like I said, five houses, 300,000 each, five houses, 300 times five is 1.5 million, which is called your GDV, gross development value. So once the project is completed, what's gonna be the value of the, the entire project, which is your GDV, which is 1.5 million pound, right? So let's talk about a, a finance. So someone coming in, and uh, they want you to know the best way to finance this deal. And uh, let's, let's, uh, from, from the bank point of view, so the first thing you want you to do is, you want you to buy this land. That's the very first thing. To buy the land, when we're looking into the products, to buy the land, or what we call a day one lending, to purchase the land on day one, you're looking at a loan to value of up to 70%. Now, Remember what we said earlier, your loan to value and rate go side by side. The more you want, the higher the interest rate is going to be. So this is in the cases of land, when you're buying a piece of land, 
you're looking at up to 70%. The reason I say up to 70%, if you go up to 65%, you'll get a better deal. So for, so for your understanding, let's uh, you know, go with the, the figure of up to 65 to 70%, which is achievable on day one. You, if you see, I also have there uh, another thing, which is called up to 100%. Now, one of the good thing is when you're doing land development, uh, you will see here construction cost, which is once you purchase a piece of land, you would like to then uh, you know, go and develop. Now that construction cost can be financed up to 100%, which is why uh, most people when they first look into, they find it very attractive. If you can find a, a, a good project, which have a profit at the end, then it all makes sense because there are banks who will give you up to 100% of this value. Now, one of the key important uh, point, as we always like to talk about, how does uh, people get misled into believe uh, something which is happening, which uh, further down the loan uh, not happening, or you, you find more complication, is uh, first, when someone provides you decision in principle, that doesn't mean offer. Decision in principle is barely just numbers, depend on what numbers you're giving and what is maybe uh, possible, uh, subject to full application. Also, this 100%, so let's say this is a piece of land, how does the lender do is, once say someone giving you, you have put down your 30, 35% deposit, bank have given you the remaining money, so that's called day one. So if you look at here, it's called day one, 65 to 70% of land. Now this is also including in trust. So that's why it's important, It's uh, unless you have you know, years of experience or you're working very closely with a specific lender, uh, it's important to have a broker working with you in such deals because he or she can look into the wider market and help you because uh, there are on sometimes people are looking at the interest rate but uh, on these type of deals sometimes it's not so much interest rate it's also the matter of fact who can lend you more because every extra ten thousand fifty thousand make a big difference when you when you're doing these deals so on day one so what does that mean is depending on say if you're doing this development over 12 months so one they're going to give you up to 65 or 70 percent of the land value they also want you to make sure they will take the interest for the next 12 months up front right so we will cover this this particular topic in more detail in the other video which is called your bridging finance and we will we'll show you an example of the code how does it look like so in simple uh, uh, a simple example will be if you buying a piece of land for hundred thousand you putting thirty thousand pound deposit bank is saying they're giving you seventy thousand pound loan but what they will do is they will they will say they will give you seventy percent which is seventy thousand pound but they will deduct the interest for the seventy thousand pound so if you are taking that money for the next 12 months they will calculate say the interest rate is one percent a month so they will take that one percent times 12 12 percent and that 12 percent interest they will deduct on day one so you will not receive the full 70,000, you will receive 70,000 minus the, the interest rate. So that's why I'd say that's what bank will do maximum 65 to 70% of including interest. After that, you got the land. Then uh, another thing is, as I said, you're looking at 100% construction cost. That construction cost, even though it's 100%, but they will not give you, uh, you know, a, a drawdown of full 500,000 pound on day one. They will give you these in stages so some of the key things to look into so uh, with, with the with the development finance now again i will refer back to the video we have done uh, last week with our uh, property manager john hamilton and recently he built a house so what, what does this structure look like first you get a piece of land you go planning then you get the services once you get the services you make sure you put the foundation in after the foundation the kit comes in you put the kit and after the kit, you know, you're looking at uh, doing, doing joiners come in and they start doing their work. So there are different stages to the development finance. So what they will do is a lender will make sure they will give you this money in stages. So every time they give you money, you your builder will do the work and then they will come back and check that the work has been done. They will sign it off and then they pay you that money. So even though they're giving you that 100% finance, you need some sort, sort of uh, your own money to start up unless your builder is happy to start the work by using his own money and then happy once the work is done at stage one and the bank's gonna sign it off, bank's gonna give them the money. But it, it all depends on your, your relationship with your builder or the builder, uh, you know, he or she again have a capacity to do that unless uh, most of the cases a client itself, they need some sort of funds available to get the project off the ground. Now, 
key things to look into here is when you are uh, looking into a game uh, like your loan to value and rate goes hand by hand same thing your construction cost even though they're giving you in arrears one of the key reasons the banks want you to give you this money in arrears in case things get wrong that you know the project is not finished yet and it's in stages so that's why they will not give you anything up front because they want to keep their risk at a certain level so they don't want you to exceed that risk that's how banks work but at the same time what they also want you to do is which just comes down to the point here I've written down is called personal guarantee most funders again depending on funder to funder they you will get access to good rates but they will look for personal guarantee so depending on this element here which is construction cost they will look for some sort of percentage now some lender won't ask for it other lenders would ask for anything between 15 to 25 percent of this construction cost so they want to see on your asset liability uh, you know income expenditure that a client have that much worth of a personal asset to provide that personal guarantee and and that will also uh, you know look, look into what sort of interest rates you're going to get now i'm going to go back so this is going to when you go back straight to the rate as well as been speaking about rate as you can see the rate we have done as low as 4.5 percent six and a half percent 7.98 percent now these rates are not per month these are per year so 4.5 percent per year 6.5 percent per year 7.98 percent per year and 9.5 and 10 and 10 percent plus as well now as you can see this one specifically this is your high street banks and they're looking at loan to value which is less so means more deposit so they are lending you so from my experience the one we have done last time the maximum they were lending is only 55 percent for the entire project so their risk is less hence they were able to offer the short but in other scenario and i would say 90 percent of our clients who are starting in property uh, they want you to leverage their money so they might be doing more than one project or they might be selling few properties to get into the development finance because because the profit is, is massive and these are the people who want you to leverage their money so they are not interested so much in the interest all they are but they're also more interested in who can give them the more money so they need to pay less deposit and on those example 6.5 percent is you're looking at once you have experience so that's another good thing once you have you know few good development in your cv the lenders uh, tend to get more comfortable and you'll start to get access to these rates six and a half percent but on an average what we have achieved for any first time developer is 7.98 percent uh, per, per year right so yeah so so far we have completed a loan to value rate now you can look in the exit now say you have bought the piece of land you got construction costs in arrears and how does that process looks like so there are so let's let's look before i look into exit look at some fees most important point so when you get into the project you're buying the piece of land and then you're getting this construction cost 100 percent in arrears fees wise again if you're using an independent broker he or she may charge you something for the admin for the time but they also charge you what you call a completion fees now make sure do not pay any completion fee until the project is complete i've seen on time and time again where uh, people uh, are getting what you call decision in principle which which is make them uh, make them believe that this is an offer which is not an offer it's just a decision in principle no valuation has been done and they're paying the full one percent two percent broker fee so stay away from that so making sure so lender now lender who's giving you the money they charge what you call arrangement fee or lender acceptance fee that could be anything from one to two percent depending on lender to lender there are lenders who will charge more but i would say r right now uh, there is there is there's plenty of lenders uh, for unexperienced people new beginners a bit of experience uh, you know experienced people there's plenty of lender in this bracket so you don't need to pay more than that lender fee when you're looking to these uh, products uh, for development finance and broker uh, broker again it's it depends on individual brokers uh, we do not charge any fees when it comes to uh, uh, bridging or development finance on those two products uh, because we have our what you call a private a list of private clients who work with us day in day out and uh, we as a firm decided we do charge a bit of admin fee 
a friend for our time, but we do not charge that, which could be anything. Most brokers charge from 1% to 2%. Again, stay away from anyone charging you more than 2%, but uh, most brokers charge 1% to 2%, but we, we personally, we do, we do not charge any broker fee on development finance and bridging finance. Now, there are other fees. This is once you discuss with yourself, so you're legal, so you'll have a solicitor. So on day one, like I said, you will, you will as if you're working very closely with your, uh, you know, independent finance broker, or you are working, uh, what you call it, uh, with, with a bank directly, you will have appointed a solicitor. The first thing to make sure, which this here, your solicitors and the time speed go side by side, we had a case whereby uh, we were unable to complete on time because at a very late stage in the process, the, the client solicitors uh, confirmed to the client that they are not the right person to do this particular type of transaction because they had no experience, they were unexperienced of dealing with it. So making sure you're asking the questions to your solicitors. Uh, one of the key example I can give you is you cannot use your residential convincing solicitor for the same purposes. So you may be having a lot of buy to let properties or your own house and you've been using uh, one solicitors who do your what you call residential convincing and they're doing this transaction but uh, they may 99% uh, of the time I've seen they only deal with residential uh, convincing rather than commercial convincing so you want to make sure that your solicitor is aware of what you're looking to do you'll be doing development there will be bridging involved tell them there will be there'll be lender involved as well so how does the process looks as you need solicitors to make your offer. Once the offer is gone, and uh, let's assume the offer is accepted, you will then appoint a bank, either directly or with the help of a broker. Now, once the bank provide you this whole uh, decision in principle, they will provide you an uh, 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 idea what will be the legal cost. Now, this legal cost is for bank to take the charge over the property. Bank will need to also appoint a solicitor who will do a lot of work. And who's going to pay that fees is the client yourself so that fees which just comes under other fees and you also you have to pay that bank solicitor and that also you have to pay your solicitor who will be dealing with the the person you're buying it from and at that time you need to make sure what fees they are charging most of the time most lenders provide you a, an example of what's the fees going to be depending on the position which which can be sub subject to change if uh, something changes again make sure you read that TNC and ask them questions. Then other, other than this, uh, valuer. So you need to get the valuation done. Don't waste your money to do valuation. If you're going to do the finance, the lenders want you to do the valuation. Most of the time they have their own panel of surveyors. They want you to use someone from their panel. So um, try, uh, you know, if, if you want, it's, it's always the best practice if you want to do your own valuation, but it comes with the cost and you need to do your numbers. If it's gonna, uh, you know, come within your budget or the lender is going to do and again it's uh, the lender the the surveyor or valuer they're going to use that's going to be a third party independent uh, company so that fees but in this particular case if you remember the construction cost which is paid in arrears the the bank the finance the lender they will also appoint what you call either the same valuer company or surveyor depending on england and scotland there's a there's a use of different terminology but there's a terminology which is called quantity surveyor or monitoring surveyor these are the terms again depending on funder or you're in england or scotland they use and they will also appoint that now what you can do is you can ask for these costs up front so the say let's example the survey company who will also providing the monitoring surveyor services for this project they're going to ask for an upfront cost to survey or value the whole site which will be a very uh, enhanced valuation which will provide details of day one value, final day value. They will also look into this costing, making sure this is enough money to you know build what you're looking to build. And not only this, once it is, they also give you after that, once they need to release this 100% construction cost in arrears, these are the people who will go to the site and sign these off. And every time they go to the site, there will be a fee. So uh, the, the minimum I've seen is 500 pound per visit. I've also seen 750, I've also seen 1250. So make sure you ask these questions, uh, you know, in, in the beginning. And uh, and yeah, and once the, as the stage is going on, these uh, quantity survey emergency, so they'll go in, they'll sign it off, and you're, you will get the money, you'll pay your builder, and the process goes on. Once you go to your 
last day once the house is a complete and let's say the time the two uh, time here time here to complete the finance which is again once once you start uh, it's usual usual scenario you're looking at up to eight weeks i would say there are lenders who, who can be quicker but it all comes down to your uh, solicitors working for yourself and all the, all the lender solicitors as well. On average, I will see up to eight weeks taking, but it can be less and it can be more as well, depending on what they find when they do the legal transactions, the, the title, the, the, you know, the security. And uh, uh, other than this, the, this is the first time. The second time is the time you tell bank how long you're going to take to build those five houses. So that's say you're saying 12 months, so they're saying you, you're saying, uh, you know, six months to build and another six months to sell. So it's always a good habit. Now, you will also have in this process what you call an architect. An architect will work very closely with yourself, will help you put the tender to have like a bid in place. So the all different builders will come in and, and put the tender to get this contract and you will be working very closely with your architect or any project managers or yourself if you have experience or if you have a team of people doing the project, one of you come up with certain skills, you're working very closely with these old professionals to, you know, uh, to choosing the right uh, person to do the job. So once they say it's going to take six months, nine months, whatever it is, and if you're exit, so you're looking to either sell or you're looking to keep, so you need to be very clear. Now, if you're looking to sell, you want to give yourself that extra time if, uh, to sell that property as well. Now, at this stage, I would highly recommend to go and see the video which i have done for uh, exit strategy which works perfectly because this is where when things uh, does get wrong you can either get wrong at the construction phase if you don't have uh, uh, your builder is unable to deliver and again it can be various different reasons uh, you know uh, things out of their control or things in their control depending on their experience and the other other place where people tends to fail is the exit if you looking to sell, as I always say, uh, if you know you've got three months left to pay this development finance and your project is finished and your, your properties are in the market, and if you're looking to sell, anyone who's coming to make an offer on the property, they need at least eight to 12 weeks to complete as well. So you're on a very tight schedule. So making sure you're working with professional and uh, as I said, go watch that video, which will help you uh, avoid and so you won't be disappointed at a later date. So other than this, this is more or less a, a good example how does it work the, another thing is to look into is a lender when they lend you money let's say again they will lend you up to 65 to 70 percent of the land they will also lend you up to 100 percent of construction cost and let's say the final value is 1.5 million what they will also do is there are other ways they check the same lending they want to make sure that the full lending doesn't so full lending which is for the land and for the construction they want to make sure that total value does not go 70% of GDV. They want to stay in GDV. What is GDV? The final value, which is 1.5 million. So in this case, they want to make sure 70%, which is 700 and probably around 350, so 1050, 1 million 50. So 70% of 1.5 million, they want to make sure at every single time in the duration of the project, the lending doesn't go above, right? Now, there are a few other uh, costs, other uh, parameters lender will use, which is called loan to cost. So loan to cost is total cost for the lending, and this is called loan to GDV. Now, the best thing you could do is if you have a project you would like to do, as I said, before you go to the stage of, you know, looking for these properties and, and looking at, uh, you know, uh, hiring a, a solicitor to make an offer on your behalf, make sure you work very closely with your finance provider to get a decision in principle. Uh, hope it was helpful as again if I missed anything or any questions you may have please uh, uh, you know put down in the comments and uh, all the very best in your property journey thank you very much